Get rich fast with csgofast.com. All right, we're here at, at ESL Pro League Season 4 Finals, uh, and we're here with the birthday boy, uh, at least yesterday, <laughs> birthday boy Jordan Nothing Gilbert. Uh, yeah, first of all, I kind of want to touch on uh, Ely because you had a couple of, you had really good results in the in the previous months, uh, in like September, and, the, uh, and after that you went to Ely and uh, you failed to make it past groups. So, yeah, that's what I want to ask about really, like what happened in the, at, at Ely and, and how you felt about it. Um, yeah, who did we play first at Ely again? Oh, you played FaZe for sure. I'm not yeah, sure with the first match. Train first time? All I remember is that we, felt, we all felt like we should have 2 0 the group. Oh. And then kind of got out from under us. And then. I don't know. The only time we ever seem to lose lately are in these like winner go home scenarios when like a tilt happened somewhere in the BO3. And uh, yeah, FaZe kind of just outplayed us overall. Um, it was pretty disappointing. Uh, overpass, they definitely outplayed us, but uh, the first two maps we felt like we could have won, just like we could have beat Mouse Sports on Dust 2. Right. Um, the Dust 2 Mouse Sports team made that 15 13 league, and they did a couple low buy strats, and quite frankly, we handled them bad. And um, Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know. I feel like you could, if you really wanted to dive into it more specifically, you probably. No, could. no, there's no me really. No, like, more like uh, uh, how, how unsatisfied with you, you were with that result, basically. Yeah, well, th we knew we have all these tournaments coming up, and even though Ely's one of the biggest right now, it's not the only one. So we're like, all right, guys, let's at least learn something from that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I could say we did learn th some things from it. I don't know if we learned as much as we should have, but uh, we learned some things. And, you know, um, I know we still have the ability to beat any team in the world. So uh, we just got to stay confident and keep working out the problems. Right. So uh, here you kind of took revenge, revenge on, on phase in that close Dust 2 game. Yeah, talk to me a little bit about that uh, because, like I said, yeah, very close game basically turned uh, was decided in the last couple of rounds. Um, which game? The uh, phase Dust 2. Yeah, the Dust 2 game. Well, I don't know, man. It was... I don't know. We felt like we felt we felt confident the whole time. Some of the rounds, I don't know. Like, sorry, I, I was immediately thinking of like our internal team talk. Um, I don't really have much to say about it, to be honest. All right. Now uh, let's see here. NRG. Uh, what I wanted to ask about the the team overall because it's kind of it's still kind of a new team. It's obviously like basically half German, half half American. Um, so yeah, what do you think about them? Like maybe basing it off on, on, on pro league results and, and stuff like that because uh, obviously they got in Tapson and he's been playing really well in the uh, in North America. Yeah, Tapson seems like their uh, their their strongest player for sure. I don't I don't really know much of the inner works of their team. Like Gobby's always been like someone who really knows how to set up rounds if you win the right rounds and um, I think, uh, I don't know, Stu seems to have a good read on it. Like when we played them, we felt pretty confident the whole way through. Um, you know, we lost that eco round, but then we felt like we lost maybe like one other round where we really like, like kind of made a mistake and they outplayed us. But on T side, we felt like most of it was pretty comfortable. CT side, we lost pistol and then we got straight into it. So felt pretty confident the whole time. I don't really know what's going to take for them to like breach that level, but they always seem like good competitors. Um, we always seem to have it easier time with them but they they seem to give like trouble to some of the other top NA teams right uh, you were talking about Stewie and kind of the the read that he had uh, is it is it him kind of uh, uh, trying to get that research in uh, before matches before events or, or is it like the more more people from the team um i guess well like Stu has lately asked like i don't know depending on who we're playing he wants more help or no help All right so, uh, Regen RG, he felt pretty confident and just said, yeah, and, like, he had a couple maps in his mind, and he's like, yeah, if it's those maps, we, I, have, uh, I have some solutions. So, we talked for like 10, 15 minutes before once we knew it was cash, and then we felt ready. Right. So, uh, the rest of the group, and Nip, SK, Dignan, Tals, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that's, uh, that's a pretty, pretty scary uh, bunch of teams. So, yeah, kind of the expectations for each of those matchups, and, and how, how well do you think you're going to match up against them? Yeah, I, like, for some reason, Nip's always been like, like we've always had this thing with Nip where we feel like we could beat them and it seems super easy and we'll go up like 5-0 or like 6-1 or something and then all of a sudden like we lose a couple dumb rounds and all of a sudden it's like 8-7 them and then it's 16-13 them and it's just like, I don't know. Um, honestly, I feel pretty like we played Dignitas and we watched them. The scary thing about playing a team like that is they got a lot of confidence right now and so people like Magic's boys, you know, swinging. You know, they got some crazy players all across the board. MSL's got them running pretty tight ship. but. I think we beat all these teams. It's just you got to take it. We got to like see how we're going to show up those days. And then SK, 
I feel like has been a little off balance lately, even though, of course, you know, they, when you win two majors and have that lineup still, they have a large arsenal of gameplay. It just depends how they decide to play and how they show up. So confident beating all three teams, but, uh, yeah, we've got to take it one match at a time and just bring our confidence and try to not make too many mistakes. Right. So lastly, I kind of want to talk about the the state of the top tier scene currently because we've seen so many different winners lately. We've seen, like, six different uh, six different teams winning the, the, the past six different tournaments. So, yeah, what do you think? What do you think that comes down to? Like, what do you think that's it is? Why is the the scene so even right now? I don't know. Maybe it has to do slightly with like the removal of coaches. It brought back in like um, me and Automatic were talking about this. How we feel like a lot more nowadays. CS is rewarding like the overall best team, not only the right. team with like you know like Mouse Sports and Nico is a great example. Like. You know, I'm not even bagging on them, but obviously you would think with that player on their team, they would just be like outstanding. But right. if you, so like, you're just starting to notice that a lot more teams that have these balanced rosters are just strategically playing well, and a lot more teams are able to win. I don't know if it's because it's more balanced out the coaches. Um, and then you got weird factors like VP not playing as well online and then not qualifying like they should be here, right? Um, but. Yeah, I mean, every major even, you notice that, like, the pool of teams that are competitive gets bigger, right? From the beginning, it was probably four, then six, then eight, then ten, then eleven, twelve. So, like, there's just more players that are more educated, I guess, in the game. And I think, obviously, the longer you see rosters stick together. That's why I like, like, Dignitas rosters mostly stuck together well. Of course, I love the VPs roster sticking together. Um, yeah, maybe because there's no coaches, people are forcing their roster to work more things out, and they're not just blaming it on a player and getting them out of there, mm -hmm. and they're trying to work things out. Maybe I really can say, but it is something that's happening. Yeah, do you think it's, it also has to do with uh, like the, the effects of the offseason? Because we're still in kind of that uh, a couple of months after that, and a lot of teams changed, like you said. Uh, and uh, obviously, there was also a big break, so that kind of uh, messed with things. SK were on a big break. Do you think that's also that also plays a factor in that? Um, I can for sure. I mean, especially with like where you let your mind go in that off season. Like um, our team with their roster change, right? So like it was kind of a weird time for us. But when we came back, it was just like work hard. With a team like SK, when you win two world championships, like sometimes you, it's easy to get complacent. I can't say they haven't been working hard, and you can still see they have the passion. So I don't, I don't know what to say. All I know is I think it's good for esports. I think. Um, next year, we're actually, instead of two weeks, we're going to ask for three weeks. So all you organizers watching this, we're trying to get August 1st through 20th off. And then we're going to try to do three weeks for Christmas. And I think it's big just to let the more people get into those breaks and plan around them and stuff. It's, it's, I think it's really good for the scene because you want teams to stick together. You don't want players to feel like they're sacrificing the whole year and they can't have a normal life and stuff. It, even though it isn't a normal life, so to speak, but you see a lot of traditional sports have those big breaks and I think it's imperative. And I think we'll learn how to implement our schedules better to say, okay, we're going to take a break, but right after the break we're going to come into a certain type of practice to make up for the break or something, right? So maybe this first time was a good trial, but I think it's very good to have. All right. Interesting stuff. Thank you very much for the interview. Do you have any last words? Shoutouts as always. Thanks for the, the fans. Thanks for the people out there in the forums who try to give coherent responses or critique to the matches or anything that you guys talk about. I always appreciate that. The Vax sucks and uh, bot person or whatever on Twitch gets a little old. So I know it's fun for you guys, but uh, it's cool to see everyone. I see more and more people on Reddit and HLTV giving uh, more thought out responses. So that's always fun. Shout out to our supporters. Um, if you ever want to buy any C9 gear course, sell out mode, store.cloud9.gg. And uh, yeah, sounds good. All right, so that was nothing from the first day at ESL Pro League Season 4 Finals. Uh, the first day was kind of hectic and we couldn't get too many teams. We're hoping to get one more interview at least from the first day, but tomorrow it should be better, guys. So, yeah. Oh. See you guys. The excuses. See ya.